I think about like even the doc, the Drake, the, this plaque right here, the best to ever have uh, plaque. Okay, mm -hmm. for the Drake joint, I was able to get that record because even oh, so hold, hold on, because because you you going into so many areas, and I really want to dig a little deeper into your story. Let's go deeper. Let's cool. go deeper. Let's go deeper. Okay, so you you said you signed artists like Lil Chat, Skinny Pimp, um, yeah, Yo, uh, Gotti. Yo Gotti. You had him for the first album. Is this, and you also mentioned TVT. Yeah. Were you distributed at that time through TVT? Yes, I, I had a distribution deal where I was getting seventy five percent of the profits, and they were getting twenty five percent. Like I didn't do any advanced deals or anything like that. I had my like I pulled up the TVT and Steve Gallup in my tour bus with my artists on the side of it wrapped and i'm like look you know i already had my songs popping in memphis and the down south so it was like he's like man it's beautiful let's do a distribution deal so i started distributing my music through tvt but you know um it, it was it was it wasn't the best scenario because see when i was putting records out through selecto hits i could press up thirty thousand units and go take them to selecto hits which is uh distributed in my backyard in memphis yeah and would sell these records up front and, and they would hold back 10% returns. And I would really see my money on music. You know what I'm saying? Like I really would sell 30,000 records. You know what I mean? And at $6 a record, you know what I mean? Minus 10% for returns and I would get that check. So I should have kept doing that, but I wanted to go national. And TVT was one of the only rec only labels that was fucking with them and Universal that was really fucking with Southern artists. You know what I'm saying? So Southern, yep, um, yep, yep. So, so, I, so I went to, uh, they understood it and they got it. So and they had Lil John and Yin Yang towards the time. So I was like, yeah, this would be a good place to be able to put out some of these records or what have you. It was a good decision, but it ended up being one of my worst decisions because Steve Golly is, is not one of the best, you know, it, it wasn't a good scenario, man. It was, it, you know, it just- Yeah, it I mean, you don't, you don't need to say, you go, go ask Lil John, go ask, go yeah. ask Yin Yang. Exactly, um, it just wasn't- They, they, wasn't they could tell you about, about they play, him. They play, play real games, they play real games and and, and I end up- I mean, but, but ultimately it cost him his label. TVT is no more. It's no more, exactly. So, so he, he, he trying to stick you up on the front end and, and it killed because he had platinum selling artists. Yes. He had not, artists. Just, I mean, not, to, to this day, Lil John is still relevant. Um, yeah. Yin Yang Twins, a classic artist. Classic. He should have kept that ball going. Yeah, and he had like Nine Inch Nails and other alternative groups that were really yep. good too. You know what I mean? And so it's just like he just did bad business, and that bad business kind of made, kind of caused me and Gotti to kind of separate. And then Gotti, so, I, I want to ask you about Gotti, and that's why I said I wanted to go back. Let, let, let's take it slow for a second. How did, how did you and Gotti connect? Is this somebody you grew up with? Did you just know him from the Memphis rap scene? And, and how did you even get him to sign to your label to get distributed by TVT? Basically, we had a um, Skinny Pimp first, and I had this hit record that was playing in Memphis called TVs that I did for Skinny Pimp, featured A-Ball, and I put Yo Gotti on the song. Gotti was popping in North Memphis. He wasn't on the radio yet, but he had a club banger called After I Fucked Your Bitch. So I like, so what I did was I was on a thing like, look, we should just all come together. So we did a joint venture, him and I, and we put out for do, to do two projects or what have you. And um, we did a mixtape together. We did a DVD together. And then we did the album, Life. And um, we put that out. I mean, I had a buzz, though. There was just a huge buzz in Memphis behind this song that I produced and I did the hook on. And it was called TV. So basically it was like, okay, I have the new label. I'm on the hook of this record. I produced it, and it's like, and I got this fire. I got this fire going on. He's a young artist that's popping in the north with a with a club hit. So we linked up from right there, and we put together what a lot of people think is one of his best albums to date. You know what I mean? Life, and um, and we was able to put that out and and put a DVD inside of it. One beat, thirty minutes was about him. Thirty minutes was about what I was doing, my kinfolk movement, and that 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 CD really just popped it off. And they did numbers because we had the TVT had good distribution, but they just yeah. didn't do good. Business. They so had they, national distribution. Yeah, they had sure. national distribution, but they didn't they didn't do good business. So we we was able to uh, touch a lot of people. But because of that good distribution and because I put my DVD inside of that Life CD, even when me and Gotti fell out for a minute, I was able to still eat because people would call my number on the CD and they'd be like, "Bro, what you just did for him, come do for me." So I would like go produce for people, man, and and, and get my bread that way or whatever. Since TVT decide not to pay us and steal Gotti and, and sign Gotti directly to them. It was just a whole, it was a horrible, horrible situation or whatever for me at the time or whatever. But uh, 
you know, when you when you keep God in your life and you keep doing the right thing, the right thing will eventually happen to you if you just keep, you know, stay focused or whatever. So, you know, it was like it was personal with me. It was like, all right, if I don't have an artist I can work with right now, I got to just do me. You know what I mean? And that's how I end up just just being out and, and put my own music out or what have you. But uh, yeah, man, it, it, it's, it was, it's just a dope story, man, to see where people are at now and see what God is doing now. And then even with Glow, you know, Glow is from Frazier. You know, I'm from North Memphis, from Frazier. God is from North Memphis, he's from Frazier as well. And um, Big Bug, he's from Frazier as well. And it's like, so that's why it was just kind of a full circle moment for me to have a song that I produced on Glow Real's new album that's out right now uh, called Get That Money. Like I produced that one. And it's crazy to be able to just kind of see it all come full circle, you know what I mean? From And then us being all from the same place, you know what I mean? What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.